We are back, Virginia and I, finally. And this is the special Burning Man edition. I'm the party scientist. Virginia is the queen of connection. She works for international festivals, travels to the World Economic Forum. And she, like me, is a connection specialist. And we're just, you're just jumping into a very casual conversation about Burning Man, which is known as one of the most innovative gatherings on the planet. Burning Man has a set of cultural principles. It's located in the desert and people spend millions of dollars setting up experiences, camps, dragging 747 jets into the desert. It's a Mecca for hedonism, but also conscious development and I just returned from a local burn as well. So let's resume, Virginia. You had way higher expectations of Burning Man. Hello, everyone. You're just jumping into my private conversation with um, Jacques Mardike. And um, yeah, I was just giving like a very unfiltered, like real version. And I will just, you know, continue on that stride because that's how we freaking roll. We are authentic, transparent beings. So, yeah, so I was sharing that, you know, as an event, you know, curator and designer myself, and I, I truly believe, like, I, I really pride myself in, in what I do. And I think that we create state of the art experiences, you know, and so just the feedback that we've gotten from people for the past five years. And so, um, you know, so I really just want to like say that I, I'm not like saying this with like arrogance or anything or like being being dismissive. I, I don't want to be dismissive to the incredible amount of work that has gone into curating and creating this incredible city over the past few years. Like it's just like so much love and honor. But like, I, you know, putting on my like event designer and and experience designer cap on and human connection facilitator. Right. Because I think that's really what's just like so incredibly important to me. Like. I expected more love, more connection, more integration. And what I just felt is that there is this because like, you know, because it's in the desert, because there's like these extreme circumstances, I was expecting a lot more like gifting and sharing and like, oh, hey, like, you know, oh, you're oh, you're hungry here, you know, and, and I've had like various situations where I was like in places and like, people were eating or like making food and like, distributing food to other people and I was like literally like waiting there for something for like two hours and it was just like I was not offered the food you know like I, I didn't I didn't want to be like hey you know so it was just like situations where I was like oh like that like human kindness or that human connection and the way that I felt it was going to be um I I, I would have loved to invite more of that you know and I would love to invite anyone listening to this to just create awareness next time going to Burning Man or festivals like this, like how can I truly be more of love and of service and connection and vulnerability? Um, and then the other piece is that I felt that a lot of the parties and like the events were not curated for connection. I was very like, of course, where I was in Camp Mystic what is one of the most connected, loving, you know, camps that does represent that. So that was magnificent that I got to have that home and that hub where we did do circles yeah. and authentic relating and stuff. I, I'd love for you to say more yeah. about that uh, as much as you're willing to share about a uh, yeah. camp mystic as much as you're yeah. allowed. But uh, I just want to emphasize this idea of selective gifting mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the dilution of mm. an event's culture as it grows. And we see that with, with all festivals. I mean, especially fully fully inclusive events where anyone can buy a ticket and go right um and, and so that's why i'm much more of an advocate for private intimate gatherings where yes. the group is highly selected and so yes. the culture can be preserved um but yeah camp mystic what did they do that was so special yeah, there was an opening ceremony where we got into groups where we shared our intentions and then we wrote our intentions down like so all of our pictures and stuff were were printed out on the wall as you walked in you could see all the mystics and then we wrote our intention under our photo and so just being like very clear and intentional about why we were there and then just connecting with our campmates um and then there was like every single person got introduced so during like meal times you could go up in the mic, every new person could like share, share something, say hello. So it's just felt like very close and connected. I, I got to share. 
one yeah. thing on that topic. So this yeah. is something really powerful, right? Like there's a mic, everyone's eating and it's yeah. like an open mic that people can yes. go up. And, and I did this yes. at my adult summer camp north of mm. Los Angeles and every every mealtime we had the gratitude mic and people oh. would just go up and they would uh, celebrate an individual in the crowd and everyone mm. would clap for them and it was magic. <laughs> The gratitude mic i love that so much yes 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 absolutely and so that's yeah kind of the the vibes that it was and then we had an amazing closing ceremony um where we had like gospel choir like led by just magic and you know just like really cool we were all singing together all of our voices harmonizing and then there was also like the closing of the intention circle like hey this was your intention did that intention come true and and so it was just really, really beautiful, very well held container, like very family. Um, but the funny thing was, is I was booked to speak at two different camps, right? So how I actually got my ticket was through a different camp. And so um, I go to my first talk and it was, you know, I think Burning Man, the, the gates opened like midnight on Saturday, right? And I, I came in like at two or 3 a.m. Like I I came in like pretty quick. I was like, I'm not going to wait in line. I got in, in an hour, you know, like really easily. Um, and then uh, that facilitation, my first one wasn't until Wednesday. And <clears throat> Jonathan was supposed to facilitate at that camp as well and showed up like on Monday or Tuesday and the stage still hadn't been built yet. It wasn't done. Like they were behind on builds, right? And so he didn't get to do his facilitation. Then when I came and I told loads of people in advance and I posted about it, then when I came, the stage still wasn't ready. And so loads of people were waiting to do, you know, Jeannie's magic carpet ride and, and, and they didn't get to do it. And so that energy sort of like dispersed a little bit. Yeah. And then and, and just, just for context, yeah. everyone, uh, the burn this year was treacherous and very yeah. hot. And yeah. that's, that's part of the spiritual journey that you have when you go to Burning Man is it's just, really difficult and it's, yeah. it blows my mind that people are able to drink so much alcohol and oh, sleep God. so little yeah. uh, it, it, the environment almost incentivizes drug use because yes. it's such a challenging environment yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to this number one rule of burning man please never drink any alcohol it's going to dehydrate you it's going to make you sick it's just awful <laughs> stick to stick to plant medicines and other things that are a lot more gentle in your system um so yeah so that was the first and and people were, and, and and i mean and i was fine with that you know like i've been nomadic since i was three years old i grew up in the dominican republic like i've been to lots of crazy different environments so for me it wasn't actually like that much of a struggle you know because i've just I, i'm more and, and i'm totally happy with like curveballs and things changing but then the next um, facilitation that I had was on, on, on Friday evening. And I, you know, it took me like half an hour on my bike to go from, you know, to an F all the way across the playa. I get there and they're like, oh, the thing that you were doing is like canceled. And I was like, okay, um, all right. Uh, and so I was like, okay, well, like I still wanted to like be of value. So I was like, you know, how can I help in, in some other way? And they're like, yeah, I mean, I guess like, you know, there's this area in here, like you can just like set up there. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, I do this thing, like the magic carpet ride. And it's like, you know, and they were like, yeah, yeah. Just like, you know, whatever set up. So I was like, okay. So I, I had a little bit of time. So I went, I biked all the way back to camp. I got ready. And then as I'm about to come out and like facilitate the next thing, a huge dust storm comes. And so I'm literally like on my e-bike with like torch on my head, like going through this dust storm like full full wide out like I can't see anything I'm just like on my bike and it takes me an hour to trudge through this dust storm from my camp to the other place and and I and I, I really like hardly could see anything but because I had an e-bike and I can like sort of like orient myself and I'm just I'm really good at orientation and like spatial awareness I was able to make it but I get there and all there is is like there's one dance floor with really loud blaring music and there's another dance floor with really loud blaring music and where I was supposed to do the human connection like tantric magic carpet ride like ooey gooey like crying space like just like full heart melt is right in between these two dance floors and it's just like 
dun, 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 dun. like you can't hear me like there's no point of me being there and so I came there and I sat there and I was like okay like this is interesting you know like, this is this is like this is a perfect example of like actually not you know, it not being the right circumstance for me to put this on. And it was a really good reflection for me to be like, hey, before agreeing as a facilitator to step into a space, I really need to make sure that I can fully explain to the people what is happening and what circumstances need to actually be in place in order for me to deliver the magic and take people like literally on the magic carpet, right? Which is what the facilitation was called. And so I sat there and then <clears throat> I, and then one of the organizers was kind of passing me and there was like this moment of just this like dismissal, you know, like there was like it wasn't actually like I wasn't being met or or heard or anything like that or communicated with. I was kind of like pushed aside and it was like, oh, can you just like wait here for a second? I'll be right back, you know, and then I was like waiting and waiting and I was like, wait a second, like, why am I waiting here? Like, this is not the right circumstance for me to do this, like. I'm not being like properly respected as a facilitator. And so I was like, okay, like, and in that moment, like with the dust storm and all these other things, like it all just like came crashing down on me. And I just like got on my bike and I left and I went <clears throat> to another space where one of my friends was facilitating like a really beautiful heart space. And I just felt all these emotions inside of myself. And I felt so angry and I was feeling so much rage and I was watching the facilitation and I could just like feel like these like tears welling up in my eyes, <clears throat> like just like these tears coming. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is not the right place. I'm obviously having all these downloads and I'm, I'm you know, this is like this emotional breakthrough that I'm having. I'm like, let me remove myself from the space. So I go on my bike and I stand next to my bike and I just start crying and crying and crying. And I get on my bike and I just start I'm crying and driving back to my camp and like reflecting on like, you know, what are these feels? And what was present to me is that I just felt that there was this lack of this feminine nurturing holding space at Burning Man where, you know, when you have, when you're, you're at the, the brink of your, your capacity and, you know, there's dust storms and there's things and there's curveballs being thrown at you that you actually aren't being like held in love where it's like, Hey, hey, come here for a moment. Like it's that feminine thing. And I kind of realized it's like burning man. It's, it's a very like masculine, penetrative, pushing you to the edge of your ability space. But as like, much done as possible. Party as hard <laughs> as you can. Exactly, exactly. So it's like, uh, where is the feminine like nourishment and, and, and holding and like integration of just like, hey, it's, it's okay. Like, let me, let me hold you through this process. And as I was crying and driving back, I was realizing I was like, oh my gosh, like I know where this magic carpet ride is supposed to be. Like I got this like download. It's like, get all your stuff together, get your speaker and go into like the, the camp mystic, like cosmic heart temple and do, do this pop-up magic carpet ride. It was like 1am 1, 1 in the morning. And I just started, I just created my own event. So I started going around to people and I was like, Hey, the magic carpet ride is about to start in 10 minutes. So I went all around the mystic area. I was just like flagging in people that were coming off, you know, just like walking down, um, <clears throat> you know, the street. And I was like, Hey, we're about to do a magic carpet ride there. Like, what's the magic carpet ride? And I was like, Oh my gosh, it's like one of the best experiences that you'll ever find here at burning man. Like I was just like, it was like painting the whole picture. And then I took lights and I drew in like a pathway into the tent so that people could see. And I set up and I get in and who's the first person that I see who walks into the tent, just like organically without knowing is Ryan Alice, the groom of the intergalactic wedding that we're about to go to and, uh, and, and facilitate the intergalactic hoedown at in, in Austin, Texas in, in October. And so he walks in and I was like, this is just a sign from the universe telling me, cause he just arrived that day. He hadn't even been to burning yet. So Ryan comes in. I was like, Oh my gosh, you're here for the magic carpet ride. Anyways, long story short, bring everyone in there, facilitate this magic carpet hold ride. Hold on, hold on. Before, yeah. you, before you jump into that, I just want to emphasize yeah. a few things that yeah. is relevant to uh, okay. event hosts and facilitators. And yeah. the first thing I want to emphasize is uh, the, the distraction of noise. And even mm -hmm. if that noise is yes. other conversations, 
Yeah. When when we hear an, another conversation or we're reminded that we're missing out on something, when yeah. we are reminded that there are other things going on that we're missing out on, it takes us out of presence. It takes us out of the depth and nurture of yeah. human connection. And so that's so important to space a group appropriately so that people aren't distracted by each other's meaningful connections. And then I want to acknowledge, you know, this deep need that we all have and it's this need to feel valued and and when we feel mm. valued that's the fertile soil for human connection it's the psychological mm. safety right psychological safety isn't just our ability to take social risks and we we feel safe to take social risks because we're not going to be humiliated but it's also this element of like oh we're going to be celebrated for taking risks our yeah. value we're inherently <clears throat> valuable as human beings and we're seen as having value and when that camp organizer dismiss you and i bet you they were super stressed and yeah. there was a good reason for them to ignore you but the impact was the impact the impact yeah. destroyed that sense of being valued yes. and so it destroyed the relationship and the safety yeah. and yeah. so you know, whenever we mess up towards someone or, you know, communicating that people have value and just being explicit and being explicit in our appreciation is so important. And that's what I do in, in most of my events is I facilitate that process of appreciation. Mm. This other thing, uh, y you said it, it's like this, this, where is the nurture? And, and, the nurture is something you're an expert at and I'm learning how to create that nurture, right? Sure. It's nurturing to, to vibe and to like be exhilarated and whatnot. But I find that most of the nurture comes at the very end of the vibing process. And that's when we cultivate belonging and we hold each other and we hug and we're in a very relaxed, comfortable state. And that gives us the ability to nurture each other. And, and when I think of the spaces that you create, and when I think of the antithesis of conventional partying, it's nurture. And nurture is slow. It's, it's, um, it's, it's less active. It's less energetic. It's mm -hmm. less stimulating. And it's, and yes. it's, it's so oxytocin rich. And mm. I, um, you know, reflecting on my own Burning Man experience in 2019, yeah, I, I, I didn't experience a lot of nurture either, uh, especially facilitated nurture, right? Like there were cuddle parties, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's just people in their own little cliques, right? So uh, what I'm trying to do as an event host is create more of that nurture. And I think the word nurture is just such a great aspirational mm -hmm. value for us as facilitators. Mm, thank you so much for giving that breakdown and those reflections. I feel like that really just like, yeah, anchors that in really deeply. And yeah, thank you for sharing. It's really, really, really powerful. And I've, and it's, you know, from the reflections that have been given throughout the events is just people expressing how safe they feel and, and just like how connected they feel. And, and I think that's just, it's such a beautiful thing. And I actually recorded the, the sharing circle at the end of the magic carpet right experience of what people said so that I can like actually time capsule those reflections and, and that feedback. And once we finished with the experience, which was um, an amazing partner exercise that leads you through uh, an opening question, which is, you know, everyone's partnered up and then you ask your partner, why are you so beautiful? And that's what you started off with. Yeah. And so people's just like hearts already just like melting and opening. And then um, we also asked, what would you like to be acknowledged for? Um, and then we would acknowledge them. And, um, and then from there, it was like, you know, show me just on your own body, how you would like to receive love. And if that's like stroking hair, you know, like having a hug or whatever, just, you know, and, and being witness in that. And then the next one is, um, how would you like me to give you love, right? Your, your partner, how would you like your partner to give you love? And people just ended in these like, you know, and I just gave them like 15, 20 minutes, just like forever, just to do that, just to be in these melty cuddle puddles and for people to take turns of just receiving. So receiving a full body massage, having their feet massaged, their hair rubbed and 
And there was just like tears and beauty and wonder. And you could just see where we all were when we started, which was like the energetic tension almost. Like people were just like exhausted and, and just a little bit kind of shaky. And then by the end of it, everyone just like melted together and was just so like nourished and loved and connected. And people who didn't know each other as they were walking in, who were then partnered and then became best friends. There was these two girls like specifically so beautiful. And like one of them was on a, on a psilocybin journey. And so she, you know, she, she was even like even more of a heightened experience where she was like, okay, like almost a little bit afraid of all the the noise and the commotion and the lights out there. And then we were like in this inner womb space. And then there was also like a couple who then got to experience that together and just feel way more connected. And the feedback at the end of the whole experience, people were saying like, I was actually having a really bad time at Burning Man until this, this made it worth it for me to come to Burning Man. This is exactly what I needed. This has been my favorite Burning Man experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I spoke with someone about the Burning Man experience, and uh, they said that it may not have been worth the financial commitment. Uh, <laughs> so that's a delight to hear. And mm. I, I'm super curious, like, evaluating your performance as a facilitator, how mm. was that for you? And was there anything you messed up on that, that you would go back and change or improve? it was flawless honestly it was perfect it was so beautiful the only thing that I would change sort of like for future is just because it was such a special experience and because it was so like at the end by the time I facilitated that it was like a Saturday essentially so it was like the last day so I didn't really have time to schedule it in ideally I would have done more of those experiences at our camp and which you know was offered to me by the camp leaders they're like yeah go in there anytime and facilitate you know it's just like I was already I already had that invitation but because I had the magic carpet scheduled at two other times I didn't do that and so that's the only thing that I would change is just like bringing that in and and announcing it so that more because so many people wanted to come to those experiences and who did show up for the scheduled experiences but didn't get to get to do it so that's just the the tweak that I would make. And then if I were to come back to Burning Man and do a Humans I Trust camp, um, which would be called Humans I Dust, uh, <laughs> what I feel really excited about is like bringing like ice baths or hot tubs, you know, just like very like, I just want it to be like rather like a smaller, like a smaller yeah. camp, but like very just like, luscious and nourishing and just like sensual and having this like huge like shift pod dome almost mm. that's like air conned and you like go in and there's there's you know there's like no dust because you know a lot of these structures with the tents the dust just comes under and then you're in there and then you're just like all swirling but having like more closed actual like dome like containers that you can just like go and and sleep and yeah. So that's just mm. some of the stuff that I would bring just like more wellness, more feminine flow, more just like ooey gooeyness. And cause they can, you know, that you can have the crazy party and, you know, peak experiences everywhere else. But like when you come into to our space, just really like feeling that nourishing, having, mm -hmm. you know, people just massaging each other and, and, and just yeah. being fed fruit and berries. Yeah. I, I think the, the archetype of the mother, you know, is very relevant to facilitators mm. of human connection. And I really like how you point out, you know, burning man. It's like, yeah. it's so masculine. It's like fire. Yeah. It's stimulating. Yes. It's yeah. colorful. It's energetic. It's hot. Yeah. It's painful. Yeah. Uh, versus yeah. like feminine. I, I'm just like envisioning mm. a mother with her baby. Like, we all want that so bad and guess what none of our like it's not acceptable to do that with our friends in in the yeah. mainstream world it's really yeah. only acceptable to do that with our romantic partner and this is my hypothesis for why so many people are in this constant craving for yes. love is We're because they don't have frentimacy and i'll credit shasta uh, Nelson for coming up with that term. That's that's the title of her book. She's a friendship yep. expert. So 
I want to pause there and I, I, I want you to add to what I've just shared, but I also want to go back to what you shared about just more so like these parties you attended at Burning Man yeah. that taught you like what you don't want to design events oh. like, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so every, yeah. I, it's just like big ragers, you know, the whole focus, everyone is just faced to a DJ. It's like, okay, this person is DJing and it's all about them. And maybe the few randoms dancing next to them. And that's what every party culture. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's I've heard like... it called. <laughs> what, what did you hear it called? slaughterhouse party culture a hundred percent a hundred percent and it's like people are just like on drugs and and on, on a on just like crazy molotov cocktail amount of drugs as well like it's not only like one thing it's like it's like hey i'm gonna do a bit of mdma or i'm gonna do a bit of mushrooms it's like no 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 it's like uh, when i'd be like hey like have you partaken in any medicines like just to ask people to understand like what was the vibe you know like like what type of conversation are you available for you know like can i go into like regenerative finance and like blockchain and like nf trees or you know like where can you know what it, what is your mental capacity at right now and people were like i am on mushrooms <laughs> lsd ketamine weed you know like all in once and i'm just like i'm like I'm like why <laughs> you know i want to i want to emphasize this so i actually believe that i have more fun and have more meaningful connections when yeah. it's daytime oh festivals. yes uh, yes and i had much more fun during the day at this local burning man event mm. uh, because ultimately when people are fully sober and and for for everyone listening to this who doesn't go to festivals we're also referring to alcohol mm -hmm. and alcohol much more so than other drugs when people are sober they mm -hmm. have a greater spectrum for the ways that they can interact with other humans and so whenever i'm at an event mm -hmm. and it's daytime first of all, I can, I can like make solid eye contact with people and I see yeah. them fully. And second of all, I can dance, I can ask them deeper questions. And so, uh, I don't, I, I usually go to bed pretty early when I'm, when I'm attending, uh, you know, Burning Man, I'd go to bed quite early. That's a, that's a great way to do it. And I just, I just want to say on the, on the topic of alcohol, I, I stopped drinking around three or four years ago. And it's one of the best things that I've ever done for my health. Anytime that I have engaged in alcohol, like the last time that I did, I was actually in, in Canada and in, in Toronto because there was a, there was a dinner and they were serving wine. And I was like, I'll have a glass of wine, you know, that turned into three and that, you know, turned into me almost throwing up in my business partner's Tesla and then eventually finally making it to my room and then running up four flights of stairs because I was all the way at the top and I didn't even make it to the toilet it was only the sink <laughs> so I threw up all in my sink and then I had to clean that up the next morning and I was like I have a headache I feel terrible I'm completely dehydrated like this is just so I'm just gonna you know sprinkle that in for anyone to that really wants to just feel so much better and have so much more energy like that is the one thing where I would just be like, you, you really don't need that. And it, it just clouds your judgment. And so just, just something to, mm -hmm. to tune into for curiosity, like, Hey, what is like maybe one shift that I could make that would just bring me so much more vitality and wellness into my day. It, it, it would be that. To, and just to, coming back yeah. to the, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. slaughter. Totally. To the slaughter. Totally. I want to go back to that. And, <laughs> and I also want to hear what really inspired you at Burning Man. Yeah, um, but I also just want to emphasize, um, yeah, this 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 reality that um, one sober fun person is like five drinks. If you find fun mm -hmm. people to be with, they are gonna enable so many more awesome experiences than more yes. alcohol. And so yes. I really regard humans as drugs like the best 
the best mm -hmm. drug, the best disinhibitor. Mm. And so, I mean, of course, it's much stronger and empowering to be your own drug and to just get so excited by the prospect of dancing and connecting with people. But uh, ultimately, um, you know, if you are looking to make the step of becoming more fun and more social without alcohol, then uh, begin by identifying some really fun people in your life who are sober and hang out with them. And they're going to make you feel great. And they're going, they're going, their fun is going to be contagious. Hmm. I love that. Absolutely. I just want to come back to the slaughterhouse piece. Cause that's just such a, it's such a great question. Um, yeah. So the times that I was, you know, in on stages or like Playa Alchemist was one of the ones that I, I really enjoyed going to just like from the vibe and the feeling of the people of the space. Um, but I just honestly like wasn't a fan of, you know, the DJs and the parties and all that other kind of stuff. Like I kind of tried it a few times where I was like, okay, like let me go on the dance floor. And it was like, just like me standing, like watching someone play music. Um, and, and in some cases, like actually like swigging alcohol out of a container. I, that's the only thing I could guess it was, you know, out of like a liquor container. Um, and and just like not bringing a lot of like presence and magic into their creation you know and so for me it's like such a sacred thing like transmission of music and frequencies um and so what I actually ended up doing when I was at you know dance floors in those places is like I would find a friend or someone that I really connected with or um you know one of our advisors in one case and we would just like go we would like leave all of that and we would find a little cuddle puddle somewhere and we would just drop in and have like a deep, beautiful, connected conversation. And so that was really, you know, that's my favorite thing to do. And, um, and funnily enough, this is the cool thing, Jacuzzi, you're going to love this is funnily enough. And I, I run events all around the world and I I'd say like one of my superpowers is I'm a connectress. So I find soulmates and I connect them and I, I bring people together. I'm a, I'm a community gatherer. I met less new friends, like new people at Burning Man than at any other event this year. <laughs> oh, oh, this is significant, Jeannie, because it means that you were, uh, potentially it means that you were immune to FOMO and that you focused on Mm. very you mm. you intentionally focus on a few people and and this is a big theme in my development as a facilitator and just my well-being journey i only need five friends like i i just need more one-on-one -on -one time with mm -hmm. really focused attention and i don't need to go out and meet tons of people and so i'm much more like curated in my my social circle and and uh the the power of one-on-one -on -one. um i really do believe that most of the nurture comes from the on um, comes from these deep one-on-one -on -one connections and mm -hmm. so hopefully my hypothesis is is correct and you had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time <laughs> or not or people I mean... just were too high to socialize <laughs> with you <laughs> I mean, that's, that's true as well. Definitely. You know, I probably knew like three, 400 people at Burning Man and maybe like, you know, 700 to a thousand people like knew of me, you know? So I definitely have like an existing like base of humans, but I just also felt that there wasn't a lot of like opportunity for new connection. Like it wasn't like, I was just expecting to meet so many more new friends where we'd, but that's what I was saying is, was like the human connection facilitation aspect, right? Where like, for example, at, at Playa Alchemist, if I was the one running that stage, what I would do is before every set or like at least at the, as the end, the, the night was beginning, I would do a human connection exercise and, you know, have people walk up to a stranger and ask them a question and do that at least two or three times so that people can actually meet new people and that we as the the space curators are the ones that are holding that container you know and and I I didn't spend so much time there during the day I know that they had a lot of like mindfulness stuff and like sound journeys and and, and that's all great but again it's like 
it's being talked at and it's just like it's just about that one facilitator like a one-to-many experience whereas what I love and what you and I really specialize in where we just like nerd out and thrive together is like it's about everyone everyone is a facilitator everyone is the artist everyone is you know the subject matter of the creation because we all get to play together and come together and that's really where I see the biggest value add like just seeing someone that I can listen to on Spotify and like you know, just like dancing and like, I, 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 it's just, it doesn't appeal to me. It's just, it's like not interesting because I've had the other option, you know, it's like, it's like being able to have like the most high quality of something and just like have our lives like so enriched. And like, you're saying full of so much like natural oxytocin and endorphins. Like, it's like, you know, it, it's like humans are the best drugs. Right. And I love what you said, like, that was such bars. And I want us to put that like on a quote or something or like, the extract it like audio extract it from this when you said that's why everyone is so much looking for love and looking for a romantic partner because at the moment in society that is the only sociable acceptable place for us to get our cuddles our hugs our kisses and all that other kind of stuff whereas yeah. if we had so much friend intimacy you know the way that like you and I have like with all of our friends we're going to feel so nourished so filled up so that the moment when someone a romantic interest does come around we don't have all this like pent up energy and like excitement of like oh my god like i just want to you know or sometimes that people are like whoa like where is that coming from but if we're all like nourished and filled up and like juiced up and it's like oh like i can like connect and love and you know feel intimate with everyone around me but you and i are such a match that i really want to take this deeper with you Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this this world in the twenty first century is just inundated with with options and with opportunities, mm. and and ultimately the shadow or the indirect, you know, detriment of that optionality is that we just we're just less deep. We're we're we don't invest in our relationships as long term as we used to and we're not having these in-depth conversations because we're distracted by shallow conversations online and on media but i want to jump back to what you said and this is really important what you shared and first of all you shared the, the vision of you leading a stage at burning man and i think we would totally reinvent uh, we would reinvent entertainment. We would reinvent what a stage is together yeah. if we did that. So we may want to consider doing that and get a fund. And, uh, you know, I just, I have people my... that already want to sponsor it. I have two or three people. Also, I have a, um, also like a, um, a really beautiful wellness dry shampoo. Like they, like they do like toothpaste, dry shampoo, everything. They want to gift everything to the camp. So we have like financial sponsors as well as just like, product enhancement sponsors of the experience so it's cool okay <laughs> maybe we can have like a, a dance party where each other dry shampoo each other. Uh, well <laughs> so... i feel we should go then full dr bronner's on it then actually <laughs> let's just all wash each other because we know that's the best really <laughs> so what you shared our secret sauce is yeah making the participants the subject matter and mm. what i wrote recently to to a potential client i wrote this i've seen a lot of djs get people dancing but they don't mm. know how to create psychological safety or playfulness mm. i get the guests giving each other joy interacting with each other in fun and creative ways in ways that they never have before DJs mm -hmm. usually play music and only 20% of guests dance. DJs don't have the toolkits of or understanding of social bonding that I have. Now, we're generalizing DJs, but mm -hmm. ultimately it sounds mm -hmm. like this paragraph is consistent with your experience, right? I, I don't go to festivals for the music. Like music to me is to enable connection. Like I'm usually facing away from the artist so I'm unique in this way because I've realized that human connection is is often way more powerful than than like good music. 
especially when the music facilitates that good connection. Um, so that's, that's what I want to emphasize. And I'm really curious, you know, we've talked about how a lot of the parties were designed and this kind of one to many, you know, one facilitator Mm -hmm. communicating and connecting with everyone instead of everyone connecting with everyone. And what we do is we connect everyone with everyone. Now, were there any experiences you had that led to you rethinking, you know, facilitation or event design or anything that was really positive and inspirational? Absolutely. I'm happy to, to, to rave about that as well. So what was really positive and inspirational is kind of what you mentioned in the beginning, right? Is these principles and, and, and being able to refer back to that around, you know, radical, um, you know, radical self-expression, you know, and, 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 and self-reliance and like these kind of things, like, where although I have to say (laughs) trigger warning here I don't really agree with the radical self-reliance one because it's not it's not community it's not tribe like I had a moment where I really needed support like I was like I was I was down you know I was down and I was I was like I, I was like reaching out and I was like hey can you help me and my RV rate mate turns to me and says radical self-reliance and walks out of the door oh my gosh (laughs) i i was like my heart was like it shattered in a million pieces and i was so angry and i was so heartbroken i felt so left alone and i was like and i was like if it was the other way around and if it was him and he was there you know, in the dust and maybe he's on some crazy acid trip or something and he really needs help. And he's like, Jeannie, please help me. And I just look at him and I say, radical self-reliance. And I walk away. That to me is not community. It's not tribe. And I was just like, wow, like I actually don't agree with this, with this principle. So I will, (laughs) I will say that, right. It's just like, it's like, don't, you know, don't be a, you know, don't be dependent, right? Don't be dependent. But I also think like, I think it's almost like, like, like radical collaboration, you know, like radical, like, like, you know, that that just, so there's just like a piece of that, but coming back to the principles, right? Like the other ones that I, that I, that I really do agree with and that I love is that what we did is we came together with this shared understanding and context of, creating this new society this new way of being where where we get to be fully expressed where we and and so you know people when while i was there it was funny because a lot of people were like yeah virginia like your life is already burning man this is just how you live this is my this is my status quo this is my normal because i i i live my life radically expressed and authentic and connected in every moment Um, And, you know, like the other day, like I I posted a really cool video, uh, a reel on my Instagram of me inviting my Uber driver for sunset. My Uber driver um, has lived in San Diego area for 20 years and has only been to the beach four times. Like, can you imagine that? And so I was like, I was like, I was like, cancel the next ride. You're coming to watch sunset with me. And we like danced in the waves and we ran out into the ocean and played like children and just like had the most amazing time ever, you know? And so I've actually been starting this, um, this hashtag, which is our life is burning man. And so I really believe that this culture that's been created is incredibly valuable. And I'm so grateful to this community and everyone that's been a part of like creating this tapestry to create this, you know, different type of, of, of world and narrative. And so that felt really good. Like, just like the nudity, the expression, you know, like, just like seeing people like openly make love, you know, in, in, in spaces with other people, you know, like, I just, I love that. And, um, and, and just, and I really love the like gift economy, right? So it's like, you can go here and you can get an amazing, like, Thai iced coffee and you know you can go here and you can um you know get pancakes or whatever like I just like loved like humanity coming together um without any financial exchange 
and with this real spirit of like full expression and love and magic. And so that I really, you know, I, I really like held as important for our community of how can we bring that in to really make our economy, because we're in a, a, a space now of building a trust economy. How can we make the trust economy more giving and more gifting and more loving and, and just like less about always being about the financial exchange but how can we like what is beyond that right so like what is the sort of like you know ken wilbur stages of consciousness like how are we in the indigo frequency like what is how can we 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 bring together the sort of that that notion of like capitalism and you know fairness and and abundance and and helping people like how can we marry this into a new financial model so that that just really inspired and excited me of, of, yeah, of taking those, those things with, and there, there was a lot of just, and, and I mean, of course the arts, it's like seeing do you, do you art. Wanna, do you want to yeah. tell us a story? Do you want to tell mm. us a story or a specific experience that, mm. that maybe, you know, was really inspirational and, and, um, you know, I, I also think it's super important to, mm preface all this conversation about burning man uh with this 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 idea that burning man is for privileged rich people i mean to a large degree and uh gifting the only people that may be able to gift uh, are people you know who have that means and yeah. so i think it's important to preface it with that but uh but yeah I, i'd love to hear you know, like, did you have peak experiences at Burning Man and like share, share one moment with us? And maybe um, it was about the art pieces. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. There, I, well, I want to put a pin in the privileged white people thing. Cause I, or I don't, you didn't say white people. But <laughs> I mean, <just> like, <laughs> <laughs> Reading between the lines. Privileged, privileged people. Right. Um, uh, so it's, it's for privileged people. I want to put a pin in that and come back to that, right? Um, but just to talk about the peak experience. Oh my God, it's so funny. Honestly, like the the other events, like the World Economic Forum, like the Castle experience that we did, like being in Ibiza this summer, like honestly, like from an event perspective, like I rate those events <laughs> higher than I do Burning Man. So it's like, <laughs> I'm trying to think, you know, of like, man like what was something that I experienced that I that I thought was really magical and like honestly like this sounds like so conceited in saying this but I think that my magic carpet ride that I facilitated at the Cosmic Heart Temple was the best thing that I experienced okay tell, tell us about the moment <laughs> like just like very honestly like just seeing like that like people actually receiving what they truly desire that just that's such a pleasure to me and here's the cool part i also got to experience it usually i'm only like facilitating but i i partnered up with ryan and ryan gave me a full body massage and then he was joined by marley and so i was getting massaged by marley and ryan alice like at the same time you know like two of my favorite people and it was just this like awesome gooey melty experience of me being able to like give but also receive um and then I would say my other peak experience was I invited this amazing woman that I've connected with her name is Carla we met at the vibes uh, music production retreat at Mandala Springs in Asheville the week before and we became really good friends and I was like hey are you going to Birdie Man she was like I wasn't going to but now that you've asked me like I'm a fuck yes to it so she came and so Burning Man was honestly like for me a lot about me and Carla having our like bestie girl time and like having our sexy outfits and taking photos at sunrise and doing dance videos and like she's a circus performer as well as like a badass entrepreneur so she has like these like fans and like loads of flow toys and like I had like my poi and my like light whip and so it's just like we would like get on art cars and just like hitchhike art cars and just like leave our bikes at the camp and just like go rogue into the playa and give ourselves to the playa and just see what happens and then we would like jump into dance floors and just like create like our own performance you know so that's really was like amazing of like having like my bestie like my burning man like other whole 
with me and like going out and like just giving ourselves to adventure and serendipity and synchronicity. So, yeah. I love that. And honestly, I haven't discovered a greater high than facilitating meaningful, emotional, and nurturing connection. Like, I, I actually, so I, I think there's something so special about sharing that experience with a co-facilitator too. But what I'm also pointing out here is that mm-hmm. you had a companion during the birth. Yes, yes. And that is so important to sh- the company, the company yeah. of a companion yeah. who shares your values. Mm-hmm. That amplifies the meaning and the monetary value even though we can't put any dollar value on these experiences but if we could it's just multiplying that monetary value of our experiences when we get to share that emotional experience with uh with others um i want to share with you uh the peak experience i'm 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 really excited to share this with you so i'm going to share my screen um because this this was the peak experience from from Burning Man, and this was a local burn that I went to, uh, and I was facilitating as well. And this is like this was like my big show. So uh, make sure you see it, and uh, maybe if you put your screen vertical, it'll work. So mm. there was a fire ban on, so the man couldn't be burned, and. Wow what happened was everyone like was given like these wooden sticks and like spoons and the the man was a pinata and oh. i ended up i ended up becoming the referee for this pinata and check this out Everyone's like just getting this healthy, aggressive release out. Like everyone's exerting full force. And I'm just like, I totally stepped into this role. No one asked me to do it. <laughs> this guy has a giant spoon. <laughs> and then uh, later on, check this out. Check this out. So I'm like playing all the music. Someone, <laughs> check this out. This guy comes in with a book. Comes in with the book. And this was the peak of tea. <laughs> it's the man with the book. <laughs> and then finally, someone smacks it and all the candy comes out, and then it's like a candy shower. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <laughs> so that was it for me. <laughs> Wish you were there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i just was there i just i just traveled back in time teleported myself into that situation and it was magnificent so i want to focus on one last question and mm-hmm. then let's conclude this spontaneous yeah. podcast episode uh, <laughs> do you want to live life any differently now that you've attended burning man hmm hmm it's just really lit this fire under my ass to curate more experiences for more people. Right. Because what we do, you know, like also our experiences are for privileged people with money, you know, like our experiences are very high ticket, um, you know, from two and a half grand, three grand for a day to 10 grand to 20 grand. Like, you know, they're very high ticket experiences. And so, I feel really inspired by like, you know, going there and being like, oh, like I actually don't like feel like that's satisfied, you know, um, to create our own festival, a trust fest. And, you know, it's funny how before you said like the mother with the baby, um, I have like my actual name for trust fest as I was going through Burning Man, having all these epiphanies was just mother, just calling the festival mother. Um, for different reasons on the one hand the nurturing of the mother but also I wanted it to be a festival that I was proud to bring my mother to (laughs) because because before I went to Burning Man um, my my mom called me and she was like 
because she she read something she thought I wasn't going anymore and she's like oh I'm so glad that you're not going to this burning man thing because frankly it looks quite dangerous like I was worried for you and I was like oh no mom like I am still going to burning man um and she was like oh okay and then I was like and you're gonna come to burning man with me too I was like I'm gonna take you to burning man one day then I went to burning man and I was like no I am not taking my mom to burning man and I love that people do that but like for my mom specifically like she would just hate it. Like she would just hate it. She would try to take care of everyone and she would be exhausted and she would be sad at how many people are taking excessive amounts of drugs. And she would just be like very worried. And so I really, I just got so inspired to create this festival where we really, Can and I we're just say something yeah. before you dive into trust fest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my dad went with me to burning man and he left yeah. early. He, did not enjoy it he found it yeah. to be fake actually and yeah. our camp was super cliquey the other thing i'll say mm -hmm. is my other father gary uh gary lachance founder of yeah. the decentralized dance party he's been yeah. telling me that he he had more fun at local burning man like yeah. three hours from vancouver than he did at burning man he's been telling yeah. me this over and over again um yeah. so you know this this is just a testament to uh, the wisdom that it's not the what, it's not the where, it's the who. The who is what matters. The who, yeah, a hundred percent, yeah. And so, I, yeah, it's just really what am I going to do differently? Is I'm really going to make more of a point to create experiences that more people can can access, and 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 just you know putting my energy where my mouth is of like, okay, great. So you you know you're going to criticize all this, but what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm just going to make it so much better and so i'm excited to like you know to curate that with you and uh, you know as you're, as you're the number one person that i would enroll in such a such an undertaking but i also feel inspired to leave a place better than we left it and like plant trees and and teach people about composting and install a compost of where we're going to do it and just things like that like i want people dancing and planting trees and and making the world a better place and actually like spending their time and resources and ener energy and, and just to just really quickly finish on the financial piece because it was a huge huge investment even though I got like you know the universe because because I I said to the universe I was like if you really want me there just like white glove me into the whole thing so I got my burning man ticket gifted to me my flight there was for free because it turned out that I had exactly enough American airline miles to cover the entire flight didn't pay for my flight um, met this incredible soul on the plane that was sitting next to me that didn't have a ticket to Burning Man. I was like, don't worry, once we land, we'll get you sorted. He drove me in. Then he bought me an incredible Burning Man stunning outfit on, on my way in. And then he also gifted me $500. So <laughs> who is this? <laughs> this is my new friend who's like a total legend um and so I literally got like white glove the universe was like here you go Virginia and and even with all of that I probably still spent like three four grand on RV on food on buying stuff that I'm never going to use again you know 700 no, 800 dollars on a dope e-bike though I'm very glad about this e-bike but I mean who knows if I'm going to be able to use it again with all the dust on it and stuff um so it's just it's a huge investment and um I mean you know like what what is huge like relative when when an experience is that incredible it could be a great investment but I also what you shared before of your friend it's like as someone that lives this life all the time and has other options and like other things to do like I don't think it is worth that investment from from what I've experienced um and it's 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 almost like so hypey it's like it's kind of like how conscious people are around ayahuasca they're like oh you have not sat with the medicine you oh you are surely surely not a conscious person that I could ever respect you know so it's like it's like this whole thing and then I sat with the medicine you know and my with my mom and my little sister and and I was like okay well you know this is awesome and I, I'm sure this could be really helpful for a lot of people in different contexts depending on like what they're going through or what they're prepared for or what they're calling in but I actually don't think that you need to drink ayahuasca in order to be a spiritual person just like I don't think that you need to go to Burning Man in order to be partake in this like peak life experience. And, and I think it's it's accessible. And here was the last 
factor of what I thought, right? It's like, I was like, okay, well, why are they doing it in the desert? And why does it have to be so difficult? And why does it have to be so costly? I was like, well, what it's doing is it's creating a, an organic filtration process of who wants it enough. Who is going to climb all the way up Everest and, you know, go and crawl their way up this mountain. And then so that we can filter a little bit of like, you know, who, and I'm sure that's one way of a filtration process. It's like, who has the money for, you know, 10 RV ticket time to invest in trying to even get the ticket and all those other kinds of, or could that whole financial like burden on the planet, on people's immune systems and, and, you know, like health, could that just be replaced with a very simple application form on type form? <laughs> you know, like, can we just ask them some questions? Or, 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 for example, if it is like an earth centered, you know, festival, can we get them to plant a tree? Right. It's like, hey, you want to come to Trust Fest? Plant a tree, pay it forward, you know, pay for the person's cinema ticket who's standing behind you or for the person's coffee it's like i want to see someone actually doing something useful for the world that's going to have a positive ripple and an impact instead of like ordering thousands of dollars worth of plastic stuff on amazon that's going to be full of dust that we throw away it just doesn't feel like it, it's not regenerative to me and so that's just the last piece that i'll say that's <laughs> well everyone if you want to be uh privileged consumer who participates in slaughterhouse culture uh burning man is right for you <laughs> just kidding just kidding the truth is everything exists at burning man and the nurture is there it's just hidden yeah. it's hard to find it, there's there's a lot of options at burning man yet yeah. uh the majority of people go there to participate in hedonism and spend a ridiculous amount of money and burn a bunch of fossil fuels so uh, ultimately it's not a sustainable event and it's not really reflective of utopia uh really what's much more reflective of utopia is some sort of local burning a man event every single week mm -hmm. in your neighborhood so yes. with that namaste to queen genie queen of nurture and feminine connection and we're now going to uh, your